Hello! Welcome to the stream. How are you? I'm feeling fine. Let's get to work. Today I want to do some work on player movement. Um, I tried to work on that yesterday, but uh, I didn't really have a clear idea of what I wanted to do. Um, so yeah, I um, was also a little bit tired yesterday, so I didn't really get much work done. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to try again, uh, see if I can uh, can improve the player movement, because I, I like to uh, at least have the game in, in a somewhat somewhat playable state uh, usually it makes it easy to test stuff out and to uh, yeah to, to keep up motivation so i want to improve the player player movement code right now because the current movement code is a bit um, annoying and i do not want any annoyances while I'm testing. I don't, well, while I'm testing stuff like terrain generation or, uh, yeah, other stuff, then I don't want to worry about uh, will my character maybe clip through a wall or something. I want to be able to focus on one problem at a time and the player character is how I navigate through the level while I'm testing, uh, at least in game mode. So getting that right is uh, quite important, and of course it, it needs to be done anyway, uh, eventually. Uh, currently working on player movement tweaks. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I want to do today. Uh, other stuff I have on my to-do list is formali yeah. formalizing uh, tile placement. Uh, so basically right now uh, editing tiles in the world is uh, quite, um, yeah, it's a quick hack job. So just meant to demonstrate that we can uh, basically change the, the tiles in the data structure and, and then it ha the renderer updates the tiles, uh, updates the mesh with the tiles being rendered. Um, but, but all of that, <coughs> <coughs> the tile placement code is in the main class right now and I do not want to keep it there. So I, I believe I'm going to move that uh, to the world class. Uh, or maybe to, to some kind of uh, system uh, system class. And after that I want to create a, a hotbar for selecting tiles. Um, we may not really, we may not get there uh, all that soon, uh, it just depends on how it goes. Uh, we might need to first do some changes in uh, the tile registry to make sure that we can actually uh, access uh, the list of tiles and uh, maybe display an icon uh, stuff like that we might need to do some changes uh, to the block uh, block class or uh, tile class i should say but yeah first i want to work on player movement tweaks so i'm going to open up unity um, see player character <coughs> now most of the player movement stuff that I'm work going to work on right now will involve um, responding to collisions and actually trying to avoid collisions so uh, in my previous streams I I uh, worked on uh, some raycasting code, which was meant to prevent the player from actually uh, 
you're falling through the world even without a collider but this run into the problem that if you have other stuff that's moving uh, uh, if you have other colliders that are moving towards you then you don't really know about that as uh, uh, as a player character I mean the player character doesn't know about any other objects moving towards him and he shouldn't know because we do not want to make our code too complex or too performance uh, intensive so when you are only using ray costs, costs to determine collisions then um, yeah you might have uh, situations where the character is just standing still but some other object is um, moving into the player character and because this other object might be moving relatively fast um, yeah you could uh, get situations where you where you get overlap between the other object and the player character because the player character is not moving so yeah maybe some ray casts are being done but they won't cover much distance since it's not really really necessary so yeah I want to have some kind of uh, I think I want to use the regular unity uh, uh, collision handling um, as a fallback um, so for a, for a player when he is moving uh, we will use the ray casts to determine when gravity should be applied or not when the character is grounded or not um, ray casts are very useful for that but then I want to use the normal uh, unity collision methods as a sort of a fallback mechanism uh, I don't know if that's uh, a, yeah, a good way to deal with it there might be other un unexpected problems with this approach later I just do not know yet and it's very difficult to actually uh, anticipate uh, those kind of kinds of problems but I'm just uh, going to try it and see where I get um, yeah so that's what I'm going to do right now um, right now I am considering whether I should maybe scrap some of this early code or maybe rewrite it I mean, yeah usually you want to be very careful you do not want to go um, you do not want to go scrapping code left and right all the time because then it's very hard to actually make any progress but on the other hand sometimes a uh, given design of a system is just plain bad and in that case it, it, it's sometimes better to just do a rewrite uh, right now I'm just looking over the code and going to try to see um, what my approach will be in this case because it's been a few days since I worked last on this I'll need to get my head uh, my headspace back into it let's see uh, player so this is all about walking this is about applying drag this is about jumping and being grounded so this grounded variable is, is quite important it determines um, whether a character can jump or not it, it will also determine uh, if gravity should be applied or not because yeah, why uh, why apply forces when, when there's nothing happening they had to jump So chances are maybe the majority of this code is already quite good and doesn't need to be changed much. Mm. 
Oh yeah, so if, if we are not grounded, then we should use uh, the jetpack function instead. Um, and in this we accelerate them to some maximum vertical velocity, because we don't want to accelerate past, yeah, past a certain uh, speed. Step assist. Step assist, I believe, also works as it as I want it to work. Only problem is, let's just uh, make our scene window a little bit larger. So, if I do a step assist here, then sometimes we end up in this strange situation. So yeah, it's basically, it's shifting our character upwards, but because we are still uh, with our yeah, with our center point. Uh, if we are still, we are still above this tile instead of this tile. So if we move to this tile, then chances are uh, the step assist will move our character upwards. But the center of the character, the pivot. Um, let me see if I can actually. Yeah, our pivot. Our center of the character basically is also the point from which we raycast uh, our ground detection uh, ray. So, so one piece of code is checking to do a step assist, and it's moving us upwards if it's relevant. But another piece of code is still seeing that we don't have any ground because we're still over here so maybe we should be checking uh, in two places maybe at the borders of the collider that might make sense so like here and maybe here or maybe in three places even So I think that's a good way to solve this uh, gravity issue. Another thing we could try is uh, is to reduce the width of the arc collider. Oh. Uh, yeah, so. Did I just do something weird? Okay. Um, one other thing we could try is to reduce the width of the collider to something very narrow. Uh, something like this. So then the chances of, of not... Uh, yeah. See, it's still there, so... Is still going to have the problem occasionally. Occasionally, it's just the chance of it happening is lower, but it can still happen depending on where you end up. So right now we we are seeing that the raycast still uh, sees that there is no not any tile below us because it's still in this this left tile. While the step assist is trying to move us to the height of this tile. 
so I think we're going to have to use two of those uh, downwards ray casts. At least if we still have those, uh, I don't really know if I. Yeah, I think I removed that code earlier. I'm going to have to rewrite some of it. Um, so yeah, n not, right now we don't have any of that uh, uh, stuff. So let's see. Uh, there's overlap. Where is where is grounded being set to false? Let's just find all references. And it's false. So is this the only place? This is a condition, this is condition, this. Oh yeah, this is also oh yeah, so yeah. This is what's causing us to fall again and again and again. So So we have what we have here is um, what we have is the step assist trying to uh, trying to move us to the height of this tile, so we can walk on top of this tile here, and then the collider no longer reg registers a collision. Probably because uh, because for the next frame um, the collider doesn't really collide anymore over here because it's like in this region so it doesn't collide with this one anymore which is why ground gets set to false which is why gravity is being applied even though it probably shouldn't. So I'm going to remove this one, and instead we are going to uh, use some raycasts to determine if we should apply gravity. Um, how should I call this? Do grounded raycasts. Something like this. Let's see. So if I'm right, we should have, we, no, that's not right. So basically I think we are going to have to make some bounce objects or something. 
Or maybe not. Uh, let's see. Do we have, a, do we have a, actual access to the collider easily? Chip body. Collider 2D. Deprecated. Deprecated. Okay. going to have to get a uh, reference to the collider I don't really like using the built-in uh, variables for this. I like I like things to be ex more explicit. Uh, so, collider dot bounce. So we're going to try to get the bounds of the collider the world space bounding area of the collider this changes every frame and it, it lets us uh, easily access the, the corners of this uh, collider So now we can make two vectors. <coughs> uh, of our origin points for the ray casts. Bottom left and bottom right. So, how do I want to populate those? So yeah, this is easy, we'll just take the min x and bounce min dot y x and bounce.min.y I uh, and then of course we need to do our raycast uh, first of course we want to determine The direction which is simply going to be down and the direction uh, I mean the the length which is going to be yeah what do we want to do um, maybe one would be a good start or maybe something higher or slightly higher or lower than one kind of depends on uh, what kind of results we get Can I put the mark in terms of step? Uh, yes hold this one Uh, 
um, yeah. So if physics to the dot raycast uh, bottom left cast there. Ik ga even naar stand sturen. Is dat bij een slaapkamer? Oh, uh, oké. Okay. Slight interruption. Oké, okay, dat is dan. Where was I? Uh, oh yeah, we had some raycast results. Um, yeah, let's just use the regular. And you know what? Instead of the instead of putting this into an if statement, I'm going to just um, put this into a boolean. Left hit, then just copy it. So we'll use the same approach for the right one. So now that, I, now that I think about it, we'll probably have to make this like something like this, maybe. So if any of those got hit. And we'll set grounded to true. Uh, yeah, actually, we we can just simply do uh, grounded equals left hit or right hit. So then, if if none of those uh, raycasts hit anything, then grounded is set to false. This gets applied in update. That seems fine, I think. I always get confused about putting stuff in update or fixed update. I know the differences between the two, but uh, it, it remains confusing all the time. <laughs> right now I'm just putting stuff in update. I could also always Move it to fixed update if required. So let's see. This thing is not really working as I want it to. And I think I know the reason. So if I pause this, then chances are we are hitting our own collider. Because these are the corners. And we're starting our raycast from here. Uh, it might be that we are actually hitting, hitting our own collider. So we might want to. Uh, Take these bounds minus y and subtract 
some tiny value from it. Let's see if this fixes the issue. So that seems to work nicely. Our jumping code is really, really high for some reason, but I guess we'll, I guess that's a problem in another place in the code. Do we still have this, um, this problem? Doesn't look like it. Jetpack is working fine. Okay. Let's see how it works if we actually try to uh, if we try to stand on something moving. So this seems to work pretty well. Of course the sprite being used for the player character is just a temporary placeholder. Uh, I have no intention of making a game uh, similar to Mega Man. <laughs> Yeah, jumping is still behaving weird. I think maybe the we need to change the acceleration. Because I believe we set that to a stupidly high value. Missing reference exception. Object of type play character has been destroyed, but you are still trying to access it. Okay, this is something in the player system, it looks like. Oh. Little mistake, this should work better. Might uh, be a good idea to increase the weight of all these. Uh, to increase the weight of this rigid body. Eventually. Why 
what if I set this to a thousand? Yeah, I'll probably have to change the movement code so that we are less... Uh, so that we obey the rules of the simulation. Like, one tiny character should not be able to apply uh, a huge amount of force to this huge heavy chunk of rock. But uh, if we're just talking about walking around and moving, then I think we are doing quite well now. So I'm going to commit this before working more on it. I uh, usually try to make small commits. This is not always practical but it's usually uh, a good idea if possible. Because then you know if, if something if you notice a problem later on down the line then you can use a uh, very simple binary search method to actually uh, to actually find out where something broke and if you have larger commits then of course well the thing you broke might be uh, in the same commit as some some other stuff that you changed and then you don't know what exactly uh, was the change that that broke uh, the thing you care about or that introduced a bug so I try to keep my commits as small as possible usually sometimes sometimes you just need to rewrite some entire system and then you end up with a lot of changes in one commit but, but uh, yeah it's a good thing always to keep in mind okay See, really, I should really separate this, these into two commits. Um, so, I'm going to make this fixed bug in uh, player system. It would still try to access player player character, even if it was already destroyed <coughs> some sometimes happens when exiting play mode in editor so yeah that's that's just a result of how unity works when you go out of play mode, then on disable gets called on all game objects, all uh, mode behaviors. And since we are also using using that functionality to be able to uh, actually disable systems from the inspector, it's a little bit uh, annoying having to deal with that. So, yeah, we'll commit 
what we just worked on. Uh, improved player uh, ground detection and handling. Improved player grounding. Improved ground detection in player character. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So I think I should be doing a push now. Because I forgot to uh, I forgot to push my changes yesterday. I now see. Um, what else do I did I want to work on? Um, oh yeah. So maybe we want to actually use the rigid body for forces and velocity because that way uh, the interaction with other moving grids will be more accurate not entirely sure if I want to do that right now uh, to be honest I, I kinda like the the, the way it works right now, just using kinematic movement so that we have full control over over movement. So maybe we can use stuff like uh, yeah, we might be able to use the same raycast approach to make sure that we that we don't try to move inside uh, uh, that we don't try to uh, try not to overlap with any grids. Of course, you run into the same issue, like if a grid moves into you, then uh, you still have the same problem. Because the character doesn't know about... Um, the character doesn't know about the grid right now. So the character, the character just stands there. And then the grid gets blocked by the character. Well, normally you want some heavy object to to take priority over a small lightweight object like a player. So I think, even though I do not want to, I, I think it's necessary to make the player actually a, a dynamic rigid body. But this always remains fun. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to work on making the player character dynamic. Uh, I might, I will need to make some changes to the code for this. Um, all the places where velocity is used, I probably need to change it to rigid body dot velocity. I also need to change the prefab, which eventually will probably will just generate through code. So we will no longer need to have a prefab. But right now I like to do it this way. Okay. So in the current document I want to replace velocity with rigid body dot velocity. That would be a nice start. Cannot modify the return value of rigid body 2D dot velocity because it's not a variable. Okay, yeah. So Vector two velocity is I don't like doing this everywhere, so maybe I can move it out of those if statements. Well, the first rule of refactoring is just first make sure it works and that you don't change things too uh, too drastically. We can always uh, make it a bit uh, cleaner later on.
Oops. Oh, almost done. the last one So that's it. And if I'm not mistaken, we could probably we could probably move this velocity definition outside of those if statements. all of them may want to change the velocity somehow uh, maybe you could change some of these into if, if else's This can be removed. <coughs> Wait, what? Oh, I'm guessing we will need to set freeze, rota freeze rotation uh, constraints. Yeah, the jumping is really, really insane. Um, let's see. Jump velocity would be 10. Some, some people might use the inspector for this, but I don't like doing that. Because then all your values become 
dependent on values that are set in prefabs and you can no longer easily change them through code. So if you have a lot of prefabs like I did in a previous game, uh, one of my past projects, um, then if you change something fundamental about the behaviors of certain objects then you might need to go through all of those prefabs to then set those uh, values to the correct uh, properties. Uh, if those values are not so realized, if you are setting them as constants in the code, then you just need to set them once in, in the code base. And you don't need to change all those prefabs. So while well, while the serialized fields are useful if you want to mess around in, in the editor and in, in the inspector, once you uh, yeah when, once you actually actually start producing, then you really want to lock those down as constants. Uh, that is, of course, unless you have multiple objects where you want to have different uh, physics properties, like one one thing can jump higher than another. And then, even then, I think it's better to handle that in code than in uh, inspector fields, usually. But that's just my opinion. Some people might not agree with it. That's fine. Just explaining my reasoning for my preferences. Uh, so what was I <laughs> testing? I was testing jumping, I believe. I still have. We still have this weird behavior sometimes. It's annoying. So did it get pushed back or something? It's doing that right now. Yeah, maybe I should just add a little bit of margin to those uh, those uh, colliders. So if we have the left, then we're going to subtract a little bit, just like we did on the y axis. Of course, on the right, we're going to add a little bit, so we're going to look slightly more to the right. And yeah, of course, these values are based on the collider, then we're just changing them a little bit. So then we should probably no longer see that problem. Of course, it's a little bit tricky to reproduce. It's still happening. Perhaps I should increase the margin. Because I do believe uh, the character is still getting pushed back due to a collision. Um, which is... <coughs> which is interfering with our other code. And I think we want to make the, coll the collider a bit it's a bit, uh, a bit skinnier as well, less wide. Because, uh, because, of course, you also do not want to end up with uh, with instances where we are almost standing on midair. Uh, yeah.
what's the size of the collider actually? It has the size of one on the x-axis. Well, that actually should be pretty okay, because that means you need you'll probably need to dig a hole of two tiles to uh, actually fit in there. Um, yeah, I don't think we suffer from this problem any longer. It seems to work more reliably now. Are jumping, keep getting distracted. <laughs> Jetpacks working nicely, jumps also working nicely. So we can jump about about maybe four tiles in height I think I'm going to disable the jetpack for now um, maybe I'll just make a little pull in for that Realize field. So we can easily turn that on and off. Control still feel a bit floaty, I guess. Maybe you should maybe we should increase the drag. Okay, this looks like it's working well. Um, so now I'm going to try if everything also still works well. If we're going to try a different landscape. Uh, or rather if, I, if we are going to rotate the landscape. So that's useful for testing what happens if we're walking on rotated tiles. It's not an exact uh, estimation of what can go wrong because those tiles will usually be physics based. So yeah, it gets more difficult to climb but that might not be a bad thing. playing basketball <laughs> with a huge chunk of rock mm. 
Okay, that that works nicely. Um, drag acceleration. We might want to change this uh, to something larger. Of course, chances are also that you might want to make those values more dynamic for because uh, yeah, eventually it might change. You might want to rename these to base walking speed or base acceleration because um, eventually you might want to have stuff like uh, items that modify the base value to um, yeah to allow your character to feel more powerful uh, to make him faster um, to allow a jetpack or not um, you might even want to disable step assist at first and then require a special item before you can uh, have step assist you can have stuff like uh, boots that increase your movement speed stuff like that <coughs> <coughs> Or maybe items that uh, that make you more hap uh, more heavy, which uh, they might want to increase your drag acceleration or your or your mass. So yeah, this is useful for testing, but eventually you can just make it a bit more complicated, depending on what you need. So is there anything else I need to tweak over here? Um, yeah, right now we're just setting the velocity directly, so I don't know for sure what effect this has on uh, on something like a cube, like this one. So if I imagine that um, that every one of these tiles is a one by one meter cube, or maybe uh, 0.5 meters, then I might want to give every one of these tiles a weight, uh, a mass of one, maybe 0 0.5. So this will be very large, a large chunk of terrain like this. It will be, um, if I say that every tile has a mass of one, then it, it will have at most, uh, well yeah, 66 times 66, uh, f yeah, 4000. If this were to be a solid chunk, so without any cave parts, um, empty tiles, then it would have a mass of 4,000 kilograms. So that's 4 tons. Um, which is actually still rather small. That's, that's, that's like uh, the mass of a large car, I believe. So yeah, I uh, probably need to figure out the mass of those things before I can actually really accurately test how these things will behave later on. That might be something I want to do right now. Um, but my bigger, bigger worry right now is in the player, because we are we are setting the velocity rather directly. That means that, uh, first of all, how the physics simulation runs will depend on the frame rate, because everything is now happening in updates. Uh, second of all, uh, because we are setting velocity directly, we might be bypassing uh, 
Unity's mechanism for resolving collisions and reducing the velocity of objects after a collision. So it might be that if we keep setting velocity directly that we can we might be able to just um, uh, push an object like this that really should be way too heavy for us. Maybe not. I don't know. I think I'll just re-enable the jetpack again. So if I if I keep enabling the jetpack, then of course we're going to fly up, and this thing is responding to us. But normally, yeah, you, a, a character is not going to carry <laughs> an entire large structure like this all by himself. You basically we're probably going to have to change the, the jetpack and also the walking movements to use for to have to use forces instead of changing velocity directly. And yeah, I think it's necessary, but it will be difficult because when you're working directly with forces and stuff um, this this can lead to good interesting gameplay mechanics like we have in uh, my earlier game Io we are doing everything to forces and momentum but it can also lead to a very uh, to a very physics feeling game um, it can lead to very floaty movement. Super Meat Boy is a very good platformer because the, the creator used kinematic movement. He did all the movement through code, not through a physics engine. Using a physics engine um, makes all the movement and velocities and forces every, your, uh, your influence on how everything behaves is, is relatively indirect because you have to change the forces and the forces will influence the velocity and the velocity influences where, uh, where uh, an object or a player is actually uh, is located uh, every frame. So there's quite a lot of indirection which makes physics uh, well, <laughs> which makes games that use physics engines heavily um, very hard to uh, to tweak to to get the numbers right. Player character to use a uh, rigid body dot velocity instead of uh, a lo local field. Mm. Instead of defining his own. So what I think we want to do is maybe um, let's just 
let's just assume that the player character has a mass of one, uh, which is one kilogram. And this grid here will have a mass of uh, what was it? Four thousand. 4096 it was so right now we have barely any influence so maybe it's not really necessary to actually uh, change our methods we still had a problem here I just noticed but as expected it's really difficult to reproduce Strange. Uh, yeah. So, if I allow jetpack. Now I'm applying a constant velocity change. But it looks like we're not really having much of an effect. So that's good. Maybe we do not need to actually switch to using forces. As long as the mass of our player is small enough relative to the mass of this object, uh, it might just be fine. Still occasionally, occasionally getting this weird glitch. It's quite difficult to reproduce. But at least it's happening way less uh, often than it used to happen so that's good we may need to put a sort of uh, limit on walking speed yeah, now we are... Why is this... Why does this keep happening? Maybe we should... Uh, after a step assist, we maybe we should just move the character slightly in the direction where the, the target tile is. That might... That might be a good fix. Uh, yes. uh, oh yeah, we also need to change the, the prefab. Because we changed it to dynamic. If I remember correctly, um, let's see. Did we not save this? Body type, yeah. That's it. Oh, 
Oh yeah, and the constraints. Stage lines. So this is the the constraint to not rotate on the z-axis. This is the body type being changed to dynamic. The other stuff is not really important. Um, I do want to set this to grounded uh, allow jetpack is true. Just because this makes testing easier. the commits with these changes. I just goofed up, but no worries. Yeah, so I have amended the commit to include those changes. Uh, I might want to reduce the walking speed. Change the name. What's good walking speed? Uh, 10 meters per second? 5? Let's set it to 5, and if it's too slow, I'll make it higher. Yeah, 10 is probably a better value. Mm. 15. Of course, this is a character of like three tiles high, so yeah, th this this feels nice. I'm going to set it to fifteen for now. Acceleration. I believe these are very high because some of the movement code might not have been working correctly previously. And there's also the problem of, uh, of frame rate, of course. So I might need to put it in something like fixed update. Or in, in tick, tick update. Uh, something like that. I don't know yet.
So yeah, let's change this to fixed update. So we can we can just about get this this tile here. Yeah, that seems like it might work. I like this behavior. This will be fixed delta time. It's gonna be a real challenge to make all of this work over network. <laughs> Networking and physics is uh, a bad combination, usually. Still this, this glitch just now. But at least it's not as frequent as this sinking through the floor thing that used to happen. So we're using a single... Oh, wait. The, the world didn't really... Uh, yeah, the mouse is back to one because we left, we left play mode earlier. Anyway, I think I'm happy with this. Uh, yeah. Did one this one? Um, so in this commit we we used fixed update instead of update. We tweaked the speeds a little bit. We changed the time the time delta to fixed delta time. other places where we need to do that I do not think so yeah so we can commit this Player and to fixed update. Okay, I will push this 
And then I think for today we are done with player movement because I do not want to work too long on this kind of code. I would like to have a bit of variation in uh, what I do. Um, so I think I'm going to put that in done and then um, I probably want to work on this next create hotbar for selecting tiles so chances are we'll need to add some extra model mod meh chances are we need to restructure some things or add some extra methods to allow us to um, index into the the tile registry to allow it to um, to give us access to the kind of tiles that are available we'll probably also want some way of getting in an icon an icon that belongs to a tile so uh, yeah that's something we might work on um, next I'm going to end the stream for now but I will be back uh, somewhere after lunch I think um, so I'll see you in like a few hours maybe um, let's say 1240 yeah I'll see you in uh, two hours which uh, for my time is 1340 this is uh, Central European summer time, if I remember correctly. So that's uh, two hours from now. I'll start the stream again. And then we're going to work on the, the tile selection, the hotbar, and actually making tiles accessible to other systems. So that's uh, gonna be fun. We might finally uh, get some. Uh, ability to manipulate the terrain in a more more flexible way and after that I uh, probably want to work on uh, formalizing tile placement because right now that happens in main and it probably should happen in the world class uh, or maybe in some other system we might get to that today we may we might not so yeah, I'll see you uh, in two hours. I'm going to uh, set a stopwatch so, or a an alarm timer so I don't forget. Uh, you know what, let's make it two hours and 15 minutes. So we'll have a nice round number. Uh, that's uh, two o'clock, uh, 2 p.m. for me. And then I'll come back and uh, work on tile selection. I hope you find the, found the stream interesting. Uh, you can always uh, leave some feedback or a chat in the chat window, Twitch. I would like to hear from you. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to end there. Have a nice day. Uh, I'll see you in two hours, maybe. At least I'll be streaming. <laughs> so see you then. Bye.